Amen. Amen. Thank you, worship team. Can you thank them this morning? Okay. If you're from Memphis and you come up to me afterward, I'm going to punch your lights out. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm kidding. I won't. Please don't let that make you afraid. Um, yes. Miss Anna from, from Memphis, I'm going to come pray for you while Dan's preaching. Huh? Or your nephew. What's his name? What's Janetta? Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to come pray with you in a minute. All right. So, one way that we can be a, a visual demonstration of Jesus' love is serving our houseless community around here. How many know that that's a thing in Savannah? And, uh, and we've got, as you're heading out these doors when you leave today, the little bookshelves on the wall, there's some black ba bags out there with a little sign that says, Go something on it, Go Bags. And uh, they're, they're full of like just snacks and socks and things like that um, to just minister to our houseless community here in our city. So grab one of those. That's for you. And just put it in your car and um, don't eat it. Just give it to somebody that's in need, okay? Youth Sunday is today from 12 to 2. And so um, they had a blast at the Ghost Pirates game last night. And, uh, and that's happening right after service in this glass uh, room right out here. And uh, parents, just go eat lunch and come back and pick them up. It's going to be a great time. Grades 6 through 12. There's also a parent night happening March the 12th. That's for youth parents. That's also for parents of kids and babies, all of y'all, okay? Got child care, got a meal, and just going to pour into you and partner with you as you raise your kiddos. One more thing, two more things I got to talk about this morning. Um, we are going to be canvassing this neighborhood with personal invites and little Easter bags, um, inviting people to Easter Sunday here. Um, I think that's one of the, just the least we can do, you know? That's a good starting place if the Lord, if you just said yes to the Lord. If you want to be a part of that canvassing team, um, where you at? Chuck, Shay right here, hands up high. Come see them or reach out on the contact form on the website and just say, hey, I want to help out with that. Um, and then our communities are launching this week. So if you are, uh, if you live anywhere in the vicinity of Savannah, there is a community, a home or a coffee shop near you where you can get plugged in with people and do life with people. If this is all you're getting on Sunday morning, that's great. But real church is in the home. And that's even more increasingly where the church is going, I believe, in the days ahead. So make sure you get plugged into community. And um, that's all the announcements I have. But I want to welcome up Dane Ray that's going to bring the word this morning. Dane. Dane and Christy have been here a good while. Dane serves as an elder here at the, at the dwelling. And uh, I love Dane. I called him a bulldog last week. Y'all remember that? Yeah. But, but, but he's a tender man of God that's got a word for us today. And he has a way of bringing it that just cuts the heart but he's got that fatherly thing too. And uh, so I just want to pray for you one more time. I know we prayed for you this morning. Come on, can you just lift your hands toward Dane? Put one hand toward Dane and one hand on your own heart. And we're going to pray for him and us this morning. Lord, would you just speak through my brother today? God, would you just, would you move in our hearts? And Lord, by what happens during this message, would you just make us more like Jesus? Amen. Amen. Thank you. All right, y'all. Um, yeah, may the Lord bless you and keep you. So first of all, the worship team. Come on, man. You know what I love about our worship team is you see them up here and they're, they're into it, right? But when they're worshiping on their own and they're not up here, they're into it. They're the same here as they are in their living room, right? I love that. I love that, right? We talk a lot about authenticity. Uh, this team's authentic, and it's just, it makes it easy, right, to come alongside of them during worship. So thank you all. Um, 
You know, Gunner, Gunner said something about being the church in this community, going to the door, telling them something that God's on your heart, the person next to you or across the hall from work. Um, <laughs> years ago, uh, I wore, was working, I don't know, somewhere in D.C., and I was driving home and have to go across the Chesapeake Bay Bridge. The traffic's terrible. Um, and I cut this dude off. And this dude got mad. I mean, mad, right? So he comes up and he cuts me off. And so I'm not having it, right? So I whip around. I cut him off. So he cuts me off again. And we're, you know, fingers flying back and forth and stuff being said. It's heated, man. It's heated. And uh, I'm drunk. <laughs> Driving, I'm behind him now. Well, he turns left. I turn left. He turns right. I'm like, well, I have to turn right. <laughs> he turns left again. I'm like, well, I have to turn left again. And he pulls into his driveway, right? And he's still giving me the business in his driveway. He thinks I'm following him. I go past his house. I'm mad as a hornet. I get to the house. I'm telling Christy. I go in to take a shower. And I'm in the shower, and the Lord's like, go to that guy's house and tell him you're sorry. I said, no, nah, Cap, ain't happening. Ain't happening, right? Uh-uh. No, that dude tells me he's sorry, and then maybe. And, and God's, you know, just gentle about the whole thing, but very persistent. And I'm arguing in the shower, like, no, nope, ain't happening, ain't happening, ain't happening. I get out of the shower and get dressed, grab my keys. Christy's like, where are you going? I was like, I got to go apologize to this dude. God's making me, you know, so... I go and uh, I pull up in this dude's driveway. And uh, I go up and I knock on his door. And then I back down the steps because I didn't want it to seem aggressive, right? I didn't want this apology to turn into <laughs> what I wanted to do. So back down the steps, the guy comes to the door, you know, and he's like, what you want? I'm like, easy, man, easy. I said, uh, I told him the whole thing. I said, I got home. Still mad, man. I took a shower and God told me I had to come tell you I'm sorry. I said, I don't want to, okay? I told him, I don't want to tell you I'm sorry. But God's telling me to tell you I'm sorry. So I'm sorry, man, and Jesus loves you. And I got my car and left. But no idea how that affected that dude, no clue. I literally don't think I've ever seen him again. But what it did was soften me. Right, So when God is telling you to do something like that, go talk to this person across here and tell them this. Go talk to this person. It, yes, it's for them, but it's also for you. It's to soften your heart and at the same time give you a boldness to put that soft heart out there. So don't, don't ignore it and don't think it's just for someone else. It's for you. Now, I have a long scripture to read this morning. Guys, I'm sorry. I, I, I was going to give them the scripture to put up there. I decided I'm going to go outside and greet for a little while. Well, I was out there until worship started. So I didn't get to do all that, but <clears throat> I am going to read Ephesians chapter 4, the entirety of the chapter. Okay? I love the word. I love the way it challenges me. Yes, it's, it's, there's a lot of things in God's word that are uplifting and they, they speak to you, right? And then you're just like, oh man, God's promises. Oh, look at that. That's amazing. I'm the kind of person that, you know, that stuff's great, but if, if, you're, if I'm not challenged, <clears throat> then what are we doing, right? And God's word challenges me like at every comma, you know what I mean? Especially every therefore, uh, oddly enough, that's what this chapter starts with. So, Ephesians 4. Therefore I, a prisoner of serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling. For you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other. Making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit. Binding yourselves together with peace. <clears throat> For there is one body and one spirit, and just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father who is over all, in all, and living through all. However, 
He has given each one of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. That is why scripture says, when he ascended to the heights, he led a crowd of captives and gave gifts to his people. Notice that it says he ascended. This clearly means that Christ also descended to our lowly world. <clears throat> and the same one who descended is the one who ascended higher than all the heavens so that he might fill the entire universe with himself. Just hold, just hold on to that for a second. Right, let me read that again. Same one who descended is the one who ascended higher than all of the heavens so that he might fill the entire universe with himself. Right? Yeah, I know God is here and I know Holy Spirit fills me. He fills the whole universe. Now, these are the gifts Christ gave to the church. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's, equip God's people <clears throat> to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. And this will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of the body, his church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its own special work. And it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. And with the Lord's authority, I, saw, I say this. Live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God has, <clears throat> excuse me, from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against him. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasures and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. But that isn't what you learned about Christ. And since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. So stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth. We are all parts of the same body. And don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry, for anger gives a foothold to the devil. If you're a thief, quit stealing. Instead, use your hands for good, work, uh, good hard work, and then give generously to others in need. So it's not just okay to stop. It's not just okay to stop doing that. Go a step further. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. So, today, I don't remember which, yeah, there we go. This is what? Part three? Oh, I will. Thanks, man. My guy. So, this is what? Part three, right, Gunner? Yeah. So, in the one series. And last week, Gunner, in his intro, he spoke to oneness as opposed to unity, right? Oneness. Um, we might not all agree all the time, but we're together in purpose and covenant. So a question that I have for you that I don't want you to answer, I just want you to think about, um, do you know what covenant is? And do you know what covenant we are in together? So even if we disagree, we're family. One in Christ, one together, living out the one another's in Scripture, right? 
So today we're going to talk about forgiving one another. You know, if we take Gunner's words to heart from last week about honoring one another, forgiving one another would become a rare occurrence because we wouldn't need to because we're honoring one another. And all of that honoring one another will show the world who Christ is in us. Forgiveness is a form of honor. And I believe one of the church's greatest sicknesses is the refusal to forgive. We refuse to do it. We refuse. The basis for that refusal, there's a number of things. Before I continue, this, this is going to sound harsh. It is not meant to, to sound harsh. I promise. I promise. It is meant to sound like Jesus loves us. Right? And this is, and he wants good for us. But sometimes we build up our walls and we won't go past them. So some of the reasons for our refusal to forgive. A sh- <laughs> Pride. Self-esteem that is based in feelings, right? How bad is that? My self-esteem is based in my feelings. And if you hurt my feelings, then you're hurting my self-worth. We have a shallow understanding of grace. A shallow understanding of just how wretched we are without Jesus. You hear all the time how you're worthy, right? We hear it all the time. People, we're worthy. We're worthy. We are not worthy, okay? If, if, we, if we got what we deserved, we'd all go to hell. We are not worthy or deserving of Christ's love. That's what makes it so amazing. But we want to walk around like we're worthy. I'm worthy. That's why Jesus loves me. That is not why Jesus loves you. Right? The Bible tells us while we were still God's enemies, he loves us. So, we, as a church, not the dwelling, big C church, we have shallow understandings of these things. We refuse to look at ourselves first, right? If, if somebody offends me, I refuse to look inside and say, well, wait a minute, is this something I did though? Right? Did I cause this? Let me take a step back. Let me look inside. Hey, let me see. Am I overreacting? Am I overreacting because I'm in a bad mood? Am I overreacting because, you know, I don't know, whatever. Am I looking at the, the faults of the other person, you know, rather than my own faults? Log and plank scenario, right? Sometimes we hold on to an offense because it makes us feel self-righteous. Right? You offended me. Now I'm better than you. So, right? I can be mad at you and be better than you. And we, we stay in that offense because we feel justified by that. I'm just, man, feels good to be justified in something. So we hold into that, right? If I give up that, then I can't be angry. If I give up that pain, then I can't feel justified. I can't set myself above someone else. And that's exactly where Satan wants us. That's where he wants us, feeding us these lies. He wants us in a place of bitterness because then he can feed us these destructive lies. Like this lie. Every time someone upsets me, they have sinned against me. That is a lie. That is just not true. Just because you upset me doesn't mean you have sinned against me. Yep, the more you think about that one, the worse it gets. <laughs> like, wow, okay, all right. 
Sometimes, man, we just need to take a look inside. Why did that upset me? What am I holding on to that takes offense to that? Instead of trying to fix the other person, you know, which isn't our job. It's not my job to fix anybody. My job to love and forgive. So Satan wants us there. Wants us to believe in these lies. If someone upsets me and I believe they've sinned against me, then does that make my feelings my true God? My feelings weren't crucified. My feelings weren't buried and my feelings didn't rise from the dead. And we just keep digesting them, man. We think they're good and empowering, but really they're, they're poison and slavery. Right? So instead of forgiving, we rot away on the inside. Bubbles up on the surface. It affects all of our relationships. It affects our work relationships, our marriages, relationships with our kids, in the church. It causes division, right? Because we, can't, we start talking about it. We can't just hold it inside. We start talking about it at that point, right? You know, so-and-so did. Hey, let's get coffee so I can tell you all about this, right? Girl, let me pick up this phone. Tell everybody about this. Hey, Christy, do you know what so-and-so said to me? And then we start causing division. Rather than seeking reconciliation and, and, and oneness. Unforgiveness is cancerous, man. It's cancerous. It hurts us. But we hold on to it. But it hurts us. But we hold on to it. It's so important for us to forgive that Jesus says this in Matthew 6. If you forgive people their sins, your Father in heaven will forgive your sin also. If you do not forgive people their sins, then your Father in heaven will not forgive yours. We read, we read that and we just keep on getting it, boy. We keep on moving. We're like, where are the blessings? Where are the promises? I need a blessing. I read that. I need a, Lord, I read that. Now I need a blessing because come on, right? Sidebar, I was reading uh, a couple weeks ago. Blessings made me think of this, and I do this sometimes, so just bear with me. Um, I was reading where uh, uh, Jesus met the disciples at the beach, right? And the disciples, Peter's like, I'm, I'm going fishing. They're like, we're going with you. So they all go fishing. Jesus shows up at the beach. They don't catch anything, right? Familiar story. They don't catch anything. They see a guy on the beach doing something when he was, he was really cooking them breakfast, which I think is like the coolest story in the Bible. So they come in and then he's like, hey, do you guys catch anything? Cast it on the other side. They catch it. Peter's like, Lord, it's you. And he takes off, jumps out of the boat, swims, doesn't care about the boat or the fish. So why do I bring that up? Because of the blessing. The fish was a blessing. And what did Peter do? Left the blessing. For the blesser. He left the blessing for the blesser. We get so caught up in the blessing. God, I need this blessing. I need this blessing. You don't need the blessing. You need Jesus. The blessing is secondary at best. At best. Jesus is first. Jesus is what you need. All right, I'm going back to forgiveness. So that verse... If you forgive others, God will forgive you. If you don't forgive others, God won't forgive you. That is brutal, man. That offends me, right? <laughs> that offend, that's offensive, man. We don't want to hear that. There's so much weight in that verse. There's so much weight to forgiveness. And if, if I'm going to take these Jesus words to heart, if I get offended by someone, I, I got I to gotta, I gotta look at me. I got to look at me first. Yes, it could be genuine, right? It could be a genuine offense. I still got to look at me first, man. Like, okay, let me wrap my head around what's going on here. And, and if I can't forgive, then am I, 
Am I, in fact, a person of grace? If I can't forgive? You can't have one without the other. Am I a person of repentance? I'm going to let you guys answer that yourselves. Or, or, or when I'm asking God for forgiveness, am I doing it out of a sense of repentance or am I doing it out of a sense of self-preservation? When really I, just, I should be a person of grace and repentance, understanding all that Christ has done for me. That's why I'm repenting because God's love is so great toward me that how dare I, Right? It sounds so restrictive and impossible, and in fact, it is. You know, we need Holy Spirit for that. Yeah. I can't do this stuff myself. Left to my own devices, um, well, let's just say it wouldn't work. Yeah. <clears throat> I need the Holy Spirit for that. I, you cannot do it on your own. Forgiveness is not... Real forgiveness is not really possible without the Holy Spirit. And so that verse seems so restrictive and everything, but what I think Jesus is telling us here is that if we can't forgive others, then we have the wrong understanding of grace, forgiveness, and repentance. Like if you have the realization that refusal to forgive is binding and blinding to your soul, it is allowing Satan to be your slave master. It is feeding your spirit poison rather than life and healing. Then when you ask Christ for forgiveness, you understand what you're asking for. God, get this poison out of me. Right? It's like the only poison that doesn't just affect me. You know, it eats me up from the inside, but it also has an effect on everyone around me. So if we understand all that, like I'm not going to be a slave to Satan or sin. A lot of you know me by now. You know that's not who I am. I'm not going to not going to do it. I'm just not going to do it. Right? Jesus has set me free. And I'm not going back to that. So I need to dig into this and understand what grace is. Understand what repentance is. Understand what forgiveness is. So when we ask Christ for forgiveness, we understand what we're asking. Release me from the guilt of my sin, from the bondage of slavery into your freedom. So if we understand what forgiveness is and does, then when we forgive someone, that's a chain-breaking act. Your forgiveness is a hammer that strikes a blow to the chains Satan would use to enslave another. Right? Your act of forgiveness carries with it freedom for someone else. Why would we hold on to that? Someone didn't hold on to that for us. And if it's freely given, we freely give. Does it hurt sometimes? Yes. Yes, it does. Is it easy to forgive somebody when we know all this? No. No, it is not. That's just life. Right? There's no, no magic pill you can take to get all rid of all that, right? It's just the way life is. Life is hard. The world is hard. Yeah. And we're called to be tender-hearted in a hard world. Yeah. So we are going to get our feelings hurt. Yeah. We're going to get wrong, and if we continue to follow Christ, it's going to happen more and more. Sorry to be so cheery this morning. So what else will happen is because you're submitted to Christ, forgiveness will flow from you. Submitted to Christ, forgiveness will flow from you. I don't give God permission to flow through me. I submit to God, and God flows through me. And when God does, forgiveness flows out of that. It's like second nature. I'll probably be right on my second to last breath when it finally all comes into comes together, right? But that's the goal 
We strive. It brings healing to others. Forgiveness is it's a beautiful gift to give and it's a power to wield. There's power in forgiveness. We want to be people of power, right? Power is attractive. We want to be people of power. So from the world standards, power means I'm intimidating. Uh, power means that I have resources at my fingertips. But in God's kingdom, power comes from grace. Power comes from forgiveness. It's not easy, man. I'm saying all this stuff, but it's not easy. So I, I was on a, I, I may, I don't know if I've told this before or not, but so if I have, feel free to scroll or whatever. But <clears throat> so I was in, uh, I was in Kairos and I was in this prison and there was this guy and I, and I was the, uh, I was one of the pastors on the weekend. And so somebody came up to me and they said, hey, can you talk to this guy? He has, he has some anger issues. Now I'm not a counselor, okay? I'm not a counselor. I was like, uh, sure, right? And the chaplain here, let's call the chaplain real quick. Get him. No, so I, I go over and I sit down next to this guy. So this guy's furious because we're talking about love and forgiveness. He's furious, man. I'm, when I say furious, he was spitting when he was talking to me, right? And I was more than a little nervous. Um, so he was mad because he had just gotten a phone call that his 21-year-old daughter had just been raped by her ex-boyfriend. And same phone call, his wife was leaving him for another man. And he was going to kill them when he got out. So I'm I, I, speaking to God in my head. I'm like, this dude's not mad. He's homicidal. This is a whole different level, man. So I'm talking to this guy. We're just talking. I'm like, look, man, I, I don't. He's like, and you're sitting up here spewing love and forgiveness. He's like, how am I supposed to forgive that? I said, bro, I don't know. I don't know how you forgive that. What I do know is that Jesus loves you and loves them. And Jesus loves you so much that he will make it possible. Furious, cussed me, you know. Um, he said a couple of things that made me a little, kind of scoot over a little bit. Um, so I shared a story with him. Um, something that happened in, 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 in my life, not directly to me. Anyway, I'm not going to give names and all that stuff about this. But someone I love deeply, um, someone tried to kill them. A person tried to kill them. Um, I happened to be sitting at my table writing out a service for a friend of ours who had just passed away. And I get this call that so-and-so tried to murder so-and-so. There's one person on this planet that could have stopped me from going to become a member of, of the gated community that is prison myself. One person, and it's Christy. And I didn't even tell her what I was doing. I just got up, went, got dressed, and she came out, and she was like, what is wrong? And I told her, and she's like, what are you doing? I was like, you know where I'm going. And she stopped me. And I was, well, I don't, I don't think furious doesn't cover it, right? So I had long told people, if you pray for somebody, it's hard to stay angry at them. If you pray for somebody, it's hard to stay mad. Be careful what you start advising people. Because God said, pray for him. And I was like, ooh, ooh, oh, you mean while I'm doing this? Or and they're like, no, in, instead of. And I'm like, no, we're not on the same page, God. Okay. I need, I need, I need Old Testament God right now. Not New Testament God, thank you. So, so I don't get, just calm down. So I couldn't pray for him right away. But eventually I did. Eventually I did start to pray for him. And it came out the first couple times. It's just like me going, God, I, that was the prayer. God, I, right? But I kept trying every day. Eventually I started praying for him. And eventually I forgave him. 
and I couldn't believe it happened. I even saw him later at a high school football game in the ticket line to get in. He was two people in front of me, and I had a choice right there. And he turned around, and he saw me. And then he looked, I mean, he looked right in my, he just turned around, right? Like nobody called his name. He just turned around and looked me in the eyes. And, and me, right then, I have a choice to make. I chose to stay with forgiveness. So I tell this guy in prison this story. Well, hold on. I told him the story of what happened and that I was trying to forgive the guy. Me forgiving the guy hadn't happened yet. So I'm telling him this story. And he goes, well, I'll tell you what. If you forgive that dude, I'll forgive these. I was like, oh, no, 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 Jesus. No, 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 no. No, Wait, that's, not, that's not how these things work, right? No, Lord, no, please, no. So we had a, a forgiveness, like a ceremony later. Um, I won't go into all the details. It was really cool, though. So this dude gets up there. I'm standing up there helping, whatever. This dude rolls up there, and he's strong as a bull grabs me by my shoulder and yanks me in. And part of the thing was he had put a piece of rice paper in this water. So he goes, put your name in. Put your person's name in the water. And I'm just looking at him, and he's like, and he's, he is not having it, right? He's not having it. He's like, put your I was like, oh, my God, man. So I did. And so he did. And then... It was the moment it went in. He busted out crying. Just imagine where we are. We're in a maximum security prison with a bunch of other dudes. And he just busts out crying. And he told everybody. He, he came to the front. And he, he grabbed the microphone because you weren't stopping him, right? So he grabbed the microphone. And he's like, I just want you all to know that today I've been saved. So I go back to visit the next month, and I go talk to him. He's the happiest dude you ever saw in your life. Cloud nine. Forgave everybody. Getting out in like six months. Going to go live with his daughter. Right? Forgiveness did that. Jesus Christ did that through forgiveness. It was incredible, man. So what if you're the one that needs forgiveness? What if you're the turd in this scenario? <laughs> You're the offender, right? I'm not saying I've been there. I'm just saying you might be. You might be. So if you've offended somebody, you need to seek their forgiveness. You need to be humble and seek their forgiveness. You need to be sincere. You're not just doing it to check a box. All right, God, you see that? I did that. We're good. If you're not sincere, I mean, then what's the point? Don't even kid around. Don't mess around if you're not sincere. Work with Jesus till you get sincere. If you're seeking forgiveness just to look better in the eyes of others, man, everybody does that, right? The world does that. We see it all the time when people have to make public apologies, and they never apologize. They just say, well, I'm, kind of, I'm sorry you were offended right? That's not an apology. An apology is owning your offense. I am sorry that I caused you this pain. I'm sorry that I did this to you. So if you and I have a conflict and I hurt your feelings because I'm mean or just, I don't know, whatever it looks like, use your imagination um, then I need to seek your forgiveness earnestly and with humility and not worry about what it's going to look like to everyone else. Even if I'm right, even if I'm right, I might still need to apologize. I can be correct and offensive all at the same time. It's a gift. It's a gift. I'm real good at it, you know? But I need, to, I need to own that. Understand my seeking forgiveness isn't about you. It's about my heart. 
right? If you forgive me, great. If you don't, I can't control that. Not saying that I'm shirking off the onus of it, but I need to come and seek your forgiveness. Whether you forgive me or not, I, I can't control that. And if you should choose not to forgive me, then, I mean, so be it. My repentance isn't rooted in your action. And I can't leave offended if you don't forgive me. Listen, man, I need you to forgive me for this. Well, I can't forgive you. Well, forget you then. I'll take it back. Can't do that. Repentance needs to be rooted in love, right? It needs to be rooted in the commands of Christ only. Again, not in my feelings. So I heard a story from the person this week. Again, I'm not going to name names, but this person, it's been a long-standing thing, and uh, I'm going to call them person one and person two. And person one was like, you know what? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and ask for person two's forgiveness. So person one shoots a text. Not my favorite way to do it, but hey. Person one sent a text. Person two responded in kind. Person one did not expect this. Right, And person one was seeking person two's forgiveness. So person one did not expect this reply of, wow, okay. Since then, person one's relationships have been better. Work relationships have been better. Other things have been growing and better. Person one even stopped having to need or use anxiety medication. Don't hear what I'm not saying. If you need your medicine, take it. But the power of forgiveness is cleansing and healing. I don't know how God does it. I don't trust anybody that can stand up here and tell you they know how God does it. But he does, right? So cleansed and healed, not only relationships, but bodies, I do want to mention something. If you have, say, ill will towards someone and they don't know it, do not go to them. Okay? Don't go to them. Tim, I'm going to pick on you for a minute. If I have ill will towards Tim, but Tim has no idea, right? And I go to him and go, Tim, I got to confess something to you, buddy. I hate you, man. I can't stand you. Everything you do makes me mad. I'm so jealous of you. I'm so jealous of you, it burns me up inside. I don't know what to do. I smacked my kid the other day because they made the same face you make. <laughs> right? Man, don't do that. Do you know what that does to Tim? Now, I've just taken my pain and put it right on someone. And I'm like, woo do I feel better, boy. Got that off my chest. I feel light as can be. Hey, Tim, let's go get some coffee or something. Tim be like, how about you hold these hands real quick? <laughs> right? And I say that because Christy and I have experienced that. Out of the blue, someone came and said, man, I've, I've had ill will towards you. I've actually prayed for you to be hurt. Man, don't, listen, if you need, need to tell someone about that, and I'm not being flippant, if you need to tell somebody that, please go see a therapist. They get paid to hear that. Tell them. Right? And I'm, I, I know that sounds flippant, but I don't mean it flippantly. I mean it sincerely. Yeah. Right? Those things we need help with. So don't lay that on someone else. Unsuspecting. This isn't popular in nowadays, but go handle that yourself. Okay? Don't drag other people into it. Because in that situation, I haven't, I haven't sinned against Tim before I told him that. I've sinned against God. So flesh that out with God, not the other person. Forgiveness isn't about feeling good. It's not about feeling good. The process of forgiveness is, it just, sometimes it just stinks, man. 
But it's not about feeling good. It's not about being a better person. It's not about taking the high road. It's not about being able to call up your buddy and be like, yeah, you know, I was just going to do this. But you know, I, you know what? I decided to be the better man. Took the high road, you know? It's not about that. It's so much deeper than that. Right, if you're just doing it to make yourself feel good, the world does that. The world does that. And quite frankly, I don't want that. Like, I'm at the point, I don't want anything the world's doing to be what I'm doing. Sometimes when you forgive someone, it still hurts. You're still angry. It's not a magic thing that makes you feel better. Sometimes when you forgive someone, it still upsets you. But you have to nail down that forgiveness and be like, I'm not budging. It's my line in the sand. I'm not moving. Yeah, I thought about it today. And then I had that phantom conversation in the head of what I'd like to do. But don't move. Stand firm in Christ. Stand there and fight it. Stand there and fight it. You know, if we start doing this stuff like the world does it, then it starts to pervert our worldview and it twists our view of one another. It starts to define how we trust and love, which, when built on a foundation of unforgiveness, is neither trust nor love. If we're building on a a foundation of unforgiveness, then what we're really doing is just being self-serving. It's completely inwardly focused. You know, one of, the, one of the things you hear in the church a lot is, well, you know, Matthew 18, right? We took him. I went and approached him about this offense. He was unrepentant. So I grabbed two others. And he still said, no. Nah. We took it before the elders, and he still said, no. Nah. So we kicked him out. That's not a forgiveness. That, that, that verse in Matthew 18 is not about forgiveness. It's about restoring to fellowship. According to Christ, forgiveness should have happened already. Before I ever approached the brother about the offense, the forgiveness should have already happened. Now what I'm trying to do is go, hey, man, you know, when you realize that wasn't right, right? Yeah, I forgive you, but let's, I love you. I don't want you to see you stay here. I love you. Let's do that. And if they just say no, they say no. But that verse is a a scapegoat for people so they don't have to forgive. And that comes from having a worldly world view, not a kingdom view. That comes from doing things the way the world does it, not the way Jesus does it. So how do we practically go about this? I don't know. Gunner, you want to handle that? (laughs) No, man. The way we practically handle this, it's not rocket science, but it is work. It's work, man. It's studying the scriptures. It's becoming a student. The, The older I get and the more long in the tooth I get in Jesus, the more I'm interested in the red words right? You get a Bible that has the the words of Christ in red and read them and then do that, right? The way we we become people that can forgive and follow Christ in that is by knowing who Christ is. It's by becoming a student of the New Testament of the Bible. Yes, the Old Testament is well, New Testament first, because that's where Jesus's words are in red that we can find. Be an apostle of Christ. Walk the way Christ walked. It takes work. It takes stubbing your toe. It takes falling down and getting back up. It takes failing. And it takes people around you to pick you back up and say, man, I know you're struggling with this. Let's just, I'm here. Okay, I'm here. It takes prayer. It takes fasting. 
fasting one of those words for anybody else in here where you're like, hey. you know, in its most base form, what you're doing is you're skipping a meal and instead of eating, you're using that time to pray. Right? That's what it is in the most base form. It grows into a relational, gosh, almost necessity with Jesus because you can't wait to do it. You know, yeah, I'm a little hungry, but I do know that this food that I'm getting from God is better than that sandwich I was about to eat. Pray, fast. Just start, just take that step. Like, I can't forgive this person. Pray for that person. It's so hard. It's so hard, man. It's so hard. But at the end, it's so beautiful. It changes you. You know? It changes you. And who, who in here that loves Jesus doesn't want to be a person that can take a hammer and break chains off of other people? I mean, I want to be a chain breaker. So I feel like we should pray, right? I feel like we should go to God with this because I know, let's see, let's, let's average five, six people a row. Three people a row have something they are having a problem forgiving. I'm probably being generous there, you know? It's hard. Guys, it's hard. Christianity is hard. Following Jesus is hard. It is, man. It's hard, but Jesus isn't hard, right? Jesus can make you feel light about it. Anyway, I'm not going to keep going. Let's, let's pray. If you have something you need prayed for in this area, then let's do that. Let's do that. Gunnar, will you come up? Brandon, will you come up and pray for folks? Um, Christy, J.D. and Heidi, um, Savannah, will you come up? And if you need something, if you need someone to pray for you, just come up, right? This is about loving each other into health. You know what I'm saying? Spiritual health. This is about applying Jesus to the source. Don't stay there. Don't stay there. Let's, man, let's get healed. Where's Melissa? Oh, <laughs> how about I just start calling people out? Um, so while, while, the, while the music's playing, <laughs> while the music's playing, just come up and get loved on. Right? That's what we're doing. Don't feel shamed. Don't feel ashamed. Don't feel like you don't deserve. You were created in the image of the holy God, okay? He loves you so much. Just come up and get loved on. Amen? Amen. Love you.